It's starting. All right, so it's live on my end. Wow, we did it. <laughs> Whoa, it even seems like sort of clear right now. Hey, everybody. <laughs> can you see comments? I can. You can, eh? I'm going to try to refresh my phone here so I can look at comments as well. Yeah, uh, oh. make sure we're working here. If, uh, there if you can see us and hear us, let us know because Chinese and C is famous for our technical glitches. Absolutely. Oh, look at that. I even see comments. This is like the smoothest live stream so far. And there's lots of comments. <laughs> hey, Super Social Club. Hey, Chad Adams. Hey, Jason Coates. Hey, Joshua Asplund. Uh, Andrew Spurl, Moose76, Brandon Lee, uh, Mark J. Goins, Tim Dietrich. There's quite a few people on here right now. That's great. We got 10 watching. So, C. Yes. You wanted to uh, kind of start things off with a, with a whiskey. Well, I wanted to... Well, yeah, I haven't poured a drink yet, which is like a super party foul here. And I'm going to start with the um, Kill Karen 12. It's a fan favorite. I think everybody that I've heard from enjoys it. So why not start there? There we go. Good, good pop. First whiskey of the night. I've had a... I've had a long afternoon, um, so because of Trenny and and my um, technical issues, we decided to purchase a MacBook, and because of our budget restraints, we went to Craigslist and got a used one. So I was planning to meet a guy at three thirty this afternoon to buy this MacBook, and. Let me just say I didn't actually get it until about 10 after 5. So it was about a two-hour ordeal. Um, and I'll spare you the details, but I'll just say that in the end, the guy forgot to bring the charging plug. So like, <laughs> and that that was the end of the two-hour ordeal to get my hands on the, the MacBook. So we are actually launching this live stream off of our MacBook at my place with presumably better internet connection as opposed to off of Trenny's iMac that is super old and slow at his place where his internet is slow. So hopefully we've cured the technical technical issues. Thoughts, Trenny? Well, uh... <laughs> As you were saying all those things, my voice or your voice and your uh, the screen was a little off from each other, which might be happening to me right now too. But that still very well could be my end of things. I'm just going to continuously kind of move my mouse around so it refreshes like the internet connection once in a while. Um, but yes, we finally have some decent technology and stuff that we can take anywhere, which is also really good. Um, you poured yourself the Kill Karen. I'm going to pour myself something that a lot of people, I, I can say they're not huge fans of, but I kind of have been finding myself liking it a lot lately. And that is the Bowmore 15-year-old. Uh, this is 43% alcohol. It's 15 years old. It is relatively well-priced. And, and it's not super heavily peated or anything like that with a nice sherry cask kind of influence. So it's a not uh, blow your socks off peat one to start your night. So that's what I'm gonna go for right now. Cheers. Excellent, cheers these. Clinky. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, everyone's talking to each other. They're not asking us any questions. <laughs> They're, yeah, the chat's usually more entertaining than the actual uh, <laughs> live stream, so. Yeah. Uh, Ongia is with us, Christine Deems, Eddie Vega, Mash and Drum, Burt Basket, or did I say that right? I just lost it. Oh, yeah, Burt Basket, or Basket, potentially. Anyway, cool. 
Um, um, why, uh, what's everyone else drinking tonight? Uh, we're going to go through a couple of different whiskeys, and uh, C and I kind of have a subject tonight that we want to open the floor. This is kind of your guys' time to uh, really respond in the comments, and hopefully we can catch up to some of these. Because, C, why don't, why don't you tell the people what tonight's video is all about? Well, just before I do that, I just wanted to prove via video evidence that after my solo review, you are not locked in the freezer. You did not get murdered. There's no dead Trenny conspiracy. Um, you are very much alive, and uh, and and that's fantastic. <laughs> that's true, unless you faked this whole live live event and we did this beforehand or something. I don't and know. every everything that you're saying is a clip that's been edited perfectly <laughs> and into script. Hey! <laughs> that's me doing the clip for you. Yeah. Sure, sure. sure. Um, okay. So we let's kick this thing off and everyone put down your your keyboard for a second. Just for a second, just listen for one second. We want to talk about what are the most um, collectible and the best investment scotches, specifically scotches we want to talk about today. So let me lob the question out. Get your hands ready on your keyboard. You can respond now. What does everyone have currently as their um most collectible bottle that they're maybe holding on to for a special occasion or um you're keeping it around you just can't bring yourself to to uncork it um because it's just so special so what's your what's your collectible bottle we're gonna let you click away on the keyboard and we're gonna read some of them out so Please, now is the time to participate. <laughs> okay, so the, the first one that I'm seeing here is from Sippers Social Club uh, saying Macallan Edition 1. So there's obviously tons of Macallans that are really sought after, and I'm sure there's some from years and years ago as well. But another part of this is sometimes it's whiskeys that you, you don't know are going to be discontinued or... Uh, for example, like the Elijah Craig 12-year-old, that was around everywhere for a long time, and now it's, it seems to be gone. So sometimes it's nice to buy a couple of bottles of things, just you never really, really can predict the way the market's going to go, right? So I'm going to go back to the comments. Mash and Drum said he's got the uh, William LaRue Weller 2016. Uh, incredible bottle, obviously, of bourbon. Um, Jason Coates says either my Glenn Farkless 1979 family cask or Springbank 20 year old fresh sherry cask. Wow, those are some nice drams. All I got to give some respect to Mark Goins because he's saying that everything he owns is open. And for a long time, Trenny, we were very proud of that fact that we used to like, we don't have any bottles that we don't open. Everything's a drinker. Which yeah, that's very true. Like, our collection looks impressive, but you realize there's it's not worth anything because everything's like half drunken for the most part. We've got a couple of bottles put aside now, but um, so yeah. Bert Bert Basket saying Highland Park Dark Origins is his collector bottle. Uh, Brandon Lee Old Pulteney Seventeen recently discontinued, and of course, I guess Highland Park Dark Origins is discontinued as well. Um, Rich uh, Woodhouse is Laird of Fintry. Uh. Chad Adams, Springbank 16, Local Barley. Collecting the entire Long Row series is a very cool idea, too. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. And then that's from uh, Sippers Social Club again. Uh, on Gia, I saw a bottle of Macallan M for $2,700 and should have bought it. It's just crazy the how pricey some of these whiskeys get, especially ones that, I mean... There's been cases where you can find whiskeys like Union 52 by Weisers for when that came out, it was like in the $65 range. And, uh, you know, since it's been discontinued and it's one of a kind, every couple of months it seems to be going up in value. 
Um, Mr. Lee's channel, which I think he's saying, is that We Rock Whiskey Club? Uh, he's saying the Ugadale L7325. So that's uh, that's another awesome bottle. And then also Amroot Double Cask, the original. Yeah. Kill nice. Holman, inaugural edition. Yeah, that's a really big one because that was like the, the first batch that the distillery ever released. So that should someday be worth quite a bit of money. Burt Basket saying that he'll be purchasing another Dalmore cigar malt. And so that's, I kind of think about, you know, when you think about collector and investment whiskeys, you often go to that realm of Dalmore and McAllen, which both have been mentioned. Sipper Social Club, he's talking about um, McAllen Edition 1, which the I can only find three and four on the shelf now for the McAllen Editions. And, um, and then Dalmore, you know, when you think of Dalmore, you think of like the 72-year-old Dalmores going for tens upon hundreds of thousands of dollars at auction. But, you know, I wonder about some of these other ones that are a little bit more pedestrian, you know, what's their, is their collectability or their auction ability, resale investment, is it better because they are kind of like an everyman bottle that people can buy or is it worse because they are a little bit more common and available out there? <laughs> yeah. And that's a good point. Like uh, one of the things that, I'm kind of wondering for some people, because there's a lot of people in here commenting the fact that, um, you know, they just buy it and they're going to drink it. And that's the case for the most part for us too. Like, I mean, there's a couple of bottles in our small collection that we are just dr going to drink when we're old. Why? I don't really know, but it might be a nice retirement thing to do. I haven't seen anyone yet, unless I've missed it admit that they're collecting the game of thrones bottles <laughs> oh that's a good point so who here who out there has either tried them or has some that they are collecting or is it one of those things that because so much of it came out all at once and then it was gone instantly um that it's maybe not going to be as collectible also because maybe one day game of thrones won't be you know we're we're at the we're in the pinnacle of the height of fame of game of thrones right now so maybe in 30 40 years it won't be as sought after maybe it will it's a great series and a great book so yeah. and you know there's also another theory out there that anything that says collector's edition or special edition or limited edition really isn't something that you should be collecting or saving um, or investing in because of the fact that pretty much everyone else that buys it is going to be doing the same thing. So there's, you know, I got to assume that, you know, half or more of the Game of Thrones bottles are being put away by people that, you know, don't even like whiskey. They don't care for whiskey. They don't care for scotch. And they're really just Game of Thrones fans. So, you know, the market is going to be flooded down the road with these bottles. Like they're not really going to be rare. Well, it's like uh, I have a, like a Wayne Gretzky rookie card, but it's produced by McDonald's. So I think a lot of people have this exact same Wayne Gretzky rookie card. Yeah. Wayne Gretzky's rookie card was not produced by McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got mine with a happy meal. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell you right away that that's not worth shit. <laughs> Uh, well, that there you go. That's the other thing. Like, uh, so what's that very typical blend? Kato's, and it's it's called like Kato's Rare Blend. <laughs> well, yeah, like J and B Rare. rare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. J and B Rare. There's nothing rare about it. Yeah. Um, um, but it's actually, like a Mortlock as well, which like it was. It kind of disappeared for a while and came back, but with their bottle that I see everywhere is like Mortlock rare with no age statement. So, <laughs> uh, we hey, just, sir. we just got a, um, uh, what the hell are those called when people give you money on here? Super chat. Super chat. Oh, it doesn't happen to us very often. Uh, mash and drum. Thank you for the super chat. Very much appreciated. That's awesome. 
Um, yeah. Uh, Sipper Social Club says, Trini and C, I agree with you on the GOT bottles. Too many released. Everyone is bunkering them. So uh, that's, you know, I guess some of you people out there that have them, if you drink them, then maybe we can, uh, it will make it a little bit more worthwhile for the people collecting them. So come on, drink them, people. Um, there's a guy on here, First Phil Whiskey. Uh, he put out a video recently. Uh, I watched it. I thought it was really well done. Really, really great job with um, the editing that he did with that video. God only knows how long it took him to edit that video because sometimes it takes me painstaking just to make the crap that we put out there. So, I mean, that guy... Uh, Kudos to you. Awesome job editing your video. So everybody should um, give his channel a little little, uh, little love. Check it out and uh, see if you like it. Um, Santa Cruzan says, hello, C. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe he already said hello to you. <laughs> doesn't care about me, I guess. I don't know. Um, my, uh, my solo review must be so popular now. People yeah, have forgotten right. about you. <laughs> it is, absolutely. Um, let's go back here and check, see what people are writing here. Uh, I'm going to just quickly say that I poured myself a very small dram and I think I got to move on to something a little bit different now. I don't have a ton of whiskey here, a ton of scotch, uh, because, well, it's mainly at your place. Um, I'm going to bring out one. I've shown it before in live streams, but this one's in my collection and it's probably not worth anything but it's sentimental to me and I'll open it one day, but it's a, uh, it's a cool one. Well, I you, while you're doing that, um, kill adult says, did Trenny dislike your video? See, cause there is one dislike on my video though. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> Shh, don't, don't tell. Don't tell. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> yeah. We should start disliking each other's videos. That would be funny. Yeah. It's audience so, engagement. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Anyway, um, this one is, I went to a whiskey school in Speyside uh, in Scotland in 2013, and the master, uh, one of the master distillers that was teaching the course was an old guy that um, had, had retired named Ed Dobson, or sorry, Dodson, and um, he gave everyone as their graduation present this 2013 aged 10 year old space side blend of all single malts so it's a unique blend of 28 selected space side single malts bottled specially for the spirit of space side whiskey festival 2013 so and it's also bottled at 40.4 percent which is kind of a random thing the cool thing is is it has my name on the bottle don't get that too often <coughs> yeah there we go that's my so, model. And so that's interesting because, you know, obviously there was only what, like 20 of those made or whatever, like who, however many people were at the, you know, the yeah, school. 16 of them made. How many? 16. So that's a super rare bottle, but it's also like no one knows about it whatsoever. There's no hype behind it. No one would know, like, like it's really probably not ever going to be worth like a lot because there's really no hype, right? Like you have to have hype to bring, you know, I guess, um, that and demand. It's a blend that isn't spe specified by any specific like distillery or anything like that, or, or, uh, you know, like J and B or any, any of these, these distilleries blenders. Um, it's kind of makes it harder to like search for, or think that it is sought after. So, but, and that, that kind of raises the point about like, who cares what it's worth because it means something to you. Obviously, like before we started doing this show, there was, you know, there's not a bottle of whiskey that you can't open. You know, you're, you know, we, we open them and then we drink them, but that one has always been there, never opened you know, that one means something to you, right? So who cares what it's worth? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's, 
it's priceless is the thing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because uh, I'm going to open it one day. I don't have a specific, you know, in reason to open it, but I will open it one day and share it with people that maybe deserve it. You might even get a sip out of it. Oh, I'd love that. Um, <laughs> Super Social Club's talking about lot 40, 12 year cast strength as a, um, a good collector bottle. I mean, I think probably our American viewers are really sick of us talking about things like Lot 40 cast strength because it doesn't come over the border and it never, probably never will. Um, plus the fact that um, the Lot 40, the Lot 40 cast strengths as they are today, the 12 and the 11 year old, those are moving into the no age statement realm next year just because of. Um, uh, lack of supply of those aged whiskeys. So, yeah, I, I totally agree that that's um, like Canadian whiskey is probably finally kind of going to have a few really choice bottles that will um, maintain some value and have some hype around them and be known and have demand. And I think we're talking about breaking news, breaking yeah. news. PJ fan 173 just gave us a super chat. Thank you so much. And he has something very cool to say. How do I go about sending you a bottle? Oh, well, you can um, just shoot us an email at trennyandc at gmail.com and we'll talk about it. I, uh, I feel like anytime that happens and one of us is just saying random stuff, um, it should be like a breaking news bulletin sound like, <laughs> you know? Well, there are other channels that have the technology to like actually press a button and like make graphics and shit happen. Like Roy actually has the ability to put up a, you know, a PowerPoint with his, with his quiz on it. So, you know, the technology is there. We just, we just bought a computer today. So we're at step one. Have yeah, a computer. That's true. That's true. We can, uh, we do have some old fashioned noisemakers. There you go. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to pour myself a new whiskey here. I know we are on the subject of uh, scotch, so I should probably stick to that. I only have a couple of bottles here right now. Um, however, I do have the Aaron Cask Finish Amarone Cask, and I have the Auchentoshan 3 Wood, <laughs> and... The Ben Romick uh, cask strength, 60.3% distilled, 2002, um, until filtered non-natural color. What is the vote on these three whiskeys? Please don't say Auchentoshan. <laughs> <laughs> Please say Auchentoshan. Please. Um... While you're waiting for people to comment on that. I got one saying, Aaron, I got two. Okay, I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't wait around too long and for the people to say Akintosh. Yeah. Um, okay, so along the lines, we're talking about collectible bottles, what people are collecting. Um, and let's, <clears throat> let's talk kind of investing a little bit. I'll throw a question out there to people. Uh, that are in the chat, I would like to know, please um, just say, you know, I don't, well, just say whatever, but how many guys out there or, or ladies have invested in an actual cask, maybe a percentage of a cask or maybe a full cask? I don't know if you've got one in your garage or, you know, how that works, but a full cask filled with whiskey, not an, not an empty one to use as a, uh, as a table in your, your man cave. So who's got a cask? Who's invested in one of those? I'm going to the chat. Let's see. And a lot of the cask, people that are buying casks are usually from uh, local distilleries. We have one on the island here called Shelter Point. And it's good stuff, but you go in on a cask and they will age it for five years. Er, yeah, they age it for the first five years for you there. And then you can buy it and do what you will with it. Or they can age it longer at a fee. So, and it costs a pretty penny, but you're still not getting maybe the best single malt or whatever whiskey you're buying because it's local distilleries. That is great in some cases, but not all the time. 
I'm gonna pour myself some of this Aaron. There's not a heck of a lot of it left, so I gotta save some because I'm gonna be doing a solo review of this in the coming future, which by the way, as you know, <clears throat> we're trying to start putting solo videos out every Monday, um, just with a little bit more like tasting notes and actual information, because we're getting away from that a little bit um, on our Thursday and Saturday videos, which is fine because those videos are a lot of fun. So um, <laughs> back to my question, Loch Ness says that the only cask he's invested in is the one around his 38 inch waist. <laughs> <laughs> Why hey, buy a six pack when you can get a keg? Right? By the way, good to see you. Um, by the way, we have forty-seven people watching right now. That's awesome. Um, so, Mister Lee's channel, which is We Rock Whiskey Club, he says he's got a couple of casks on the go. Care, do you care to clarify from what distilleries and um, why you chose casks? Is it just because you want to have a shit ton of whiskey? Or is it because of you know price or investment value or what was your reason? Or just general rarity because yep. it's a single cask. And Christine Deems said that she has bottled two casks. So um, curious to know which casks she she got in on. When I was in the states one time, I think they had like a whole. You could buy a barrel of Jack Daniels, like regular Jack Daniels. It was like four grand for a whole barrel of Jack Daniels or something like that. I don't even remember when this was, but it was the first time I ever saw like in a Costco, a whole barrel of Jack Daniels that you could buy. I was like, what the hell is going on here? So there's a couple of comments here. Um, Christine Deems uh, has done that and said they're from a local distillery bottled the bourbon and rye wheat this summer. Ooh, so, fun. yeah, quite a few there. Um, we walk risky. We oh, this is from Mr. Lee's channel, saying, "AKA We Rock Whiskey." We bottled a '94 Ben Riek because they sold it to us, and everyone else was selling new make. So that's pretty cool. That's a good enough reason, I'd say. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, uh, Mr. Channel, Mr. Lee's Channel One says, um, "We rock whiskey. We also have two barrels in Dubaglas Distillery. I don't. I'm probably not saying that right. Um, and they are half ours and half the distilleries. So that's kind of a good way to go about it too. If you don't have to maybe buy the whole thing." And Brandon Lee said that his club picked up a barrel of Elijah Craig. That's pretty Whoa, cool. That's really cool. So, like, when it comes to those barrels, how long do you age them? Do you just do you just kind of keep infinitely aging them? You know, you know, so that you have some Elijah Craig twenty three year old, or you know, do you do they give you a recommended time or a required time? You've got a you've got to bottle it by twelve years old, like their product, or uh, you know, I've never really looked into it. That's why I'm I'm asking. Yeah, I've never really looked too much into it too either, but I guess you would have to bottle it and then what happens with the air gap as the barrel goes down, are you? Because I'm guessing the whiskey's coming out of there at a higher strength, so you're gonna have to, you get almost, you know, a quarter of a cask more um, by adding whatever percentage you want your whiskey to be at, unless you like it, like cask strength, I suppose, but you could potentially, they bottle it all the way down to 40 percent if you want to so uh, you know i'm wondering that what do you do with the cask as it goes down do you just bottle all of it at once and kind of go from there i don't know so i guess question for christine deems when she bottled hers did you sell those bottles after or did they get distributed amongst the club or was you just have them all in a dark basement somewhere or like what do you what do you do with all that whiskey once you've got it i gotta say uh bert basquette says this is a really great discussion like i am definitely gonna buy a cask now holy crap <laughs> <laughs> so i'm glad that uh, we can spark a conversation and this 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 conversation this topic really came up like we had this um we had this live stream planned anyway 
but um, yesterday I was texting with um, with Rob Whiskey and the Six, and I was actually asking him about the McAllen editions because I had seen the McAllen edition three on the shelf and I hadn't seen it out for for a long time. I thought it was all gone, and I said to Rob because he's a bit of a uh, McAllen buff. I said, "Hey, Rob, is this McAllen edition three stuff like?" Should I be buying this up? Like, is this, did I stumble upon some gold here or is this just whatever? And he indicated that, um, that it was his second favorite of the, of the four McAllen editions and that it's not really worth anything, you know, more than what you pay for it right now. But he believed there would be some, you know, some downstream value. But I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that after I was texting back and forth with Rob about that a little bit. I got to thinking like, well, I wonder what are good investment bottles? Like what are good good bottles to collect? What are other people, you know, what are other people collecting? Um, so that's really kind of how it came about tonight is just like, just curiosity, just wondering what do other people, you know, what are they into? What are they collecting and what are they kind of investing in? Totally, totally. I'm going to just talk about what I'm drinking here for a second because I keep going back to the nose and then thinking like I must be smelling something. It's really weird, but I'm getting, this is again the Iran uh, Amarone cask. And I would say Iran, it's, it's Aaron, right? Anyway, That's Aaron. I'm getting a, a uh, oddly like, you know, when you open a Corona and it's like got that kind of like skunky kind of smell to it. I'm getting that out of the nose and I've never had that over here before. Anyway, moving on. Well, are you still on your first one there, Steve? I am, but I, I poured a pretty, um, a pretty tall one here and I've, I've been talking probably too much too. Yeah. You better crush that. Uh, what is it again? I can't even remember oh, that <clears throat> this bad boy. Right. That's a real nice bad boy. Yeah. So um, this, this, um, this kit kill Karen is, 12 years old, 46%. And um, like we said, it's it's a lot of people's uh, uh, favorite or a go-to. It's it's no color, non-chill filtered, um, age statement, 46%. So it checks four out of the five boxes because it doesn't really check the box on price. I think I think you bought this bottle. What was this was like 125, 30 bucks, right? Yeah, it's a it's a relatively pricey bottle. Pricey 12 year old for sure. Yeah. Um, so we got it. Uh, where is it here? Santa Cruz and says, I want to be Christine's new best friend. <laughs> Everybody does. Um, I'm going to show the people what, so we're going to do a bit of a giveaway at the end of the, um, <clears throat> at the end of the live stream here tonight, get your challenge coins out because we're going to use the randomizer here and pick somebody um, somebody's number that has a challenge coin and we're going to give away a couple samples of a couple of, um, they're not really collector bottles because we opened them. They're not really investment bottles. But when I think about, when I think about bottles that maybe could be worth some money, sometimes I think about these independent bottlers and we bought a couple of old malt casks, um, old malt cask bottlings and they are both pretty damn delicious. So one of them was our whiskey of the year a couple of years ago, and it is the um, Lafroig 1994, and it is absolutely stunning. It, it's seriously my whiskey of life. I think it's not a year. If it could win every year, it, it probably would for me. It's I'm, I'm not even like that big of a peat head, really, and I just think it's perfect. It's like the most well balanced, 50% alcohol, uh, natural color, non chill filtration. Uh, um, 1994. How, how many years is it? 12 years old. Just it's like some of the best Scotch whiskey, whiskey in general I've ever tasted in my life. And it's kind of sad that we're giving this away right now because we'll never see it again. I'm assuming. So I got to try to relive those memories. I don't know. Well, it's. I mean, this bottle is practically at. Oh Christ! There's so much shit in here right now. This bottle is practically at um, heel heel um, levels, but this is this Lafroig 
1994. Uh, all the things you were talking about there. It is 12 years old. It was bottled uh, in 2007. One of 390 bottles. And uh, 50%, all that stuff you said. It came with a uh, luggage tag, which was pretty cool. <clears throat> and this was our famous cork broken off uh, bottle but there's only that much left in it but it needs to be it needs to be experienced by somebody other than us because we already love it there's got to be somebody else out there that we're gonna maybe when we will send two samples out to, to two different people of this one and uh, let a couple of other people enjoy it because it is insanely insanely good easily the best peated scotch i've ever tasted um so now the way we are giving them out is people that are have our challenge coins so we might as well give you guys an opportunity if you don't have challenge coins yet for whatever reason um you can buy them now just uh buy them th you, you explain it <laughs> well i i got it i don't even know if we should do that because there's only there's only four left, so uh, I wouldn't want to get payment from like five people and then and then have no coin for the last person. That's but fair. Uh, um, yeah, what we let's we could talk to people after the show for these, um, and because we're always going to use these for draws. So um, I mean, you could certainly buy one now, uh, one of these last four if you like. But I can't include them in the in the draw because um, I just don't want to have multiple people uh, try and get one and then not have enough for everybody. So, but we do have ninety six of them in circulation. So there's a bunch of people out there. Um, last last week when we did our patron only live stream, we gave away um, samples of Wiser's thirty five. Union 52. Ding, 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 ding. Sorry, but uh, Eric Waite just gave us a pretty damn big uh, super chat, and all it says is send me a coin. Okay, well, we'll give you one, Eric. <laughs> okay, there's Jeremy Holder uh, gave us a super chat as well, and it says, speaking of samples, thanks for the samples a couple of weeks ago on the Patreon stream. They were supposed to get here today, but were delayed by weather. Yeah, sorry about that, but you will be getting those samples, and uh, we look forward to hearing what you think of them, that's for sure. But that there's a funny story behind that, actually, because for Jeremy Holder, I already emailed him, because I was like, hey, um, when you get that box with the samples in it, there's a four pairs of socks in there, and then a couple of, like, really nice car washing rags because i didn't i got to this the place to ship the box and i had like nothing to stuff the box with i was like oh shit i forgot the bubble wrap so i had like these brand new socks that <laughs> i could bought in my truck behind the seat i was like okay see you later socks so i shoved these socks and a couple of like car washing rags into the box and uh, so jeremy you get the samples and um you also get four pairs of socks and a couple of rags to wash your car with. So enjoy. Classy, I know. Hey, you get more than you ask for with Trenny and C. <laughs> That's right. There's always. There's hey, always we're at an age now that new socks might be the better part of that, that package. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. They're clean. They're clean. I think they still have the little plastic uh, thing through them. Okay, but seriously, we're going to give um, this away today um and we are gonna give away this is another one we're gonna send samples for today and this is the highland park 23 year old from old malt cask so um yeah this one was distilled you'll like this distilled in may of 1984. not bad so that was uh 35 years ago, almost. So, which is crazy, because that means it's been sitting in a bottle for quite a number of years. Yeah, it was sitting on the shelf for like 10 years before we even got it, so. Yeah, um, so that's from our first impressions. 
so cool. I remember because I was like a really big Highland Park fan. And so I, I kind of like the benchmark was at that point just like the 12 year old. And obviously the 18 year old's amazing, but it's gotten way too expensive. So the 12 year old is like a really good single malt whiskey for Highland Park. And then I tried that thinking it was going to be the best thing in the world. And I was kind of semi disappointed because it was just so different. And as I've, we've tasted it, it's become like easily one of like the best single malts that we own because it's just 1983, they were doing things differently. They had a different like consumer base and people wanted something a little bit different. So that's what you taste in that bottle. It's not the Highland Park of this modern day. It's, it's completely different. Really, really, really good, but different. So I got to say one more thing because we, we're going to um... – we're going to ch cut the live stream a little bit short tonight. And that has to do with the um, the computer purchasing debacle from earlier this afternoon. So when I bought the computer from the guy off Craigslist that took me two hours to buy it, I don't know if I said this earlier, but when he came, there was a whole issue and he had to leave and come back. And like, it was a big cluster F, but when he came back, he forgot the charging cord for the computer. So when I got the computer, it was at like 50% battery power and I had no way to charge it. So what I did is I withheld some of the money for the guy and I said, look, get me the cord tomorrow or I'm keeping this cash and I'm buying a cord. But the, the point is, is that we launched the stream through the new computer because Trenny's computer situation is not so good. His is kind of slow. And I will say that the stream has been better tonight with the connectivity. So I think that maybe hosting the uh, stream through our new computer has been much better. But the point is, because I didn't have the charging cord, I'm down to 7% battery right now. <laughs> and so we might just be dying here at some point. So um, when this thing gets down to... Let's give those away. Let's give them away now. Okay, 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 okay. Um, one other thing then is... Where is it? Oh my God, there's so much stuff around here. I went to the Strathcona uh, liquor store here in Victoria. It's downtown. And they had a whole bunch of these um, sample bottles. So, now send out these, send samples in these little sample vials. And we've got a few of you guys out there that we've talked about sending samples to. And uh, I now have these little bottles. So we'll be able to um, send things back to people that have sent things to us and do a little bit of tradesies and all kinds of fun stuff. But um, point being, I bought like 20 of these things so that <clears throat> so that we can send stuff out to people. So anyway, that was kind of a pointless story. But anyway, um, so we're going to get stuff away. Yeah, let's give these samples away because uh, if you got 7%, that's not going to last much longer because you were at, what, like 53% like half an hour ago? <laughs> well, we were at 50%, but we were mucking about with a whole bunch of crap before. So let's, yeah, let's do, um, let's do the giveaway here. I'm looking for the randomizer. Pretty random. I think that's it. No, that's not it. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna pour myself another dram because I'm I'm ahead of the game. Okay, so one uh one rule that we have is that um if you've already won something, you can't win again. At least not yet. What we gotta share the love here with a few more people before we um before we start doubling down for people. The other rule is you can't you can't win if you're somebody that we've like traded coins with like, you know, scotch test dummies or, you know, any other whiskey reviewers. We pretty much don't, we don't let them win stuff because they don't need it. They got their own kind of deal going on and we don't expect to win anything from them. So here's the randomizer. Well, I've set it to um, a winning number between three and 100. And the reason for that is because we have coin number one. My wife has coin number two. And so the the coins actually start with number three and they go to 100. So as you can see right now, it's it's at 49. That's just with the starting point. So ignore that. And I'm going to hit randomize and whatever number comes up, 
that person's getting the Highland Park 23 and Lafroig samples. Here we go. 88. Ooh, is that a winner already? I don't know. Can we remember? You have the uh, list on hand. I have the list, but I don't have who's won before, so I don't know. We might just have to give it whoever that we'll person is, recognize. unless I. Re Who will recognize the name? Scrolling, scrolling, looking for eighty-eight. Oh, that's Dan Bova. Sorry, Dan, you already won. Dan Bova already won a bottle of Weller Twelve from us. That wow. randomizer is not random enough, apparently. Dan Bova got the hot number. So sorry, Dan. We got to go again. Uh, here we go. Number four. Whoa, that's cool. Whoa. That's one of the early coins. Unless that's one that we... That is that is high power concepts, which I can't remember who that is, but that's one of our one of our regulars. But um, I can't remember who that is, but the company name under that was high power concepts. So if you're high power concepts, you have won yourself some samples. I'll go back in our history and find out who that was, but that, that's a winner. So cool. number four, high power concepts is a winner, and we're gonna pick one more person that's gonna win. Here we go, back to the randomizer. Okay. Here we go again. 81, a lot of 80s. 80s, the winners, okay. 81. I just gotta read this comment, it just says, Jason Coach says, Turns out Dan Bova codes random number num, number generators for a living. <laughs> that 81, 81 is Aqua Vitae. So sorry, Roy. You cannot <laughs> win the sample. Sorry, Roy. This is, this is, is dead laptop. Laptop. Okay, this is a real shit show, eh? Okay, here we go. I'm going to try again. Randomize. 62. 62. <laughs> Let's see if we can that give some shit promising. away. That sounds promising. 62. Unless 62 is like sitting here in front of me, one of these four. 62. Not finding it. Not finding it. I got to go back to the top of the list. 62. I don't want to miss it here and have somebody mad at us, but uh, I'm not seeing 62. Is it behind you? Oh, 62 is sitting right here in front of me. Okay. Wow. This is, this is a lot harder to give shit away than I've ever had before. Okay. So What's you're going again. Three. Okay. Here we go. 36. That also looks promising. <laughs> Some serious prices, right? We're shit. Gonna die in like a like literally a minute here. So, thirty six Ross Mashburn. Woo! Ross Mashburn. Thirty six and number four were the winners. Okay, I gotta write those okay. down so don't forget. We better cut this off. So everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. We had, I think, a pretty good record of like forty seven viewers tonight. We have some good winners. Some really really good discussion. Let us know if there's any subjects you want us to touch on and talk about uh, in comments. Um, any I last words, see? Yeah, um, one important note is that we're doing patron-only live stream as our next live stream. So all it takes is uh, $1 a month. We don't do a per, um, per creation fee. We do a monthly. So if, if anybody's willing to go on our Patreon, and do one dollar a month, then you get entered into Patreon draws, um, the patron only draws, as well as um, the patron only live stream, and then the private patron only videos. We put some of our um, stupider stuff on uh, Patreon, and we're going to continue to add random stuff to our patron only videos uh, library. So there's extra content in there. And um, a fun group, a small group, but a fun group for um, patron-only live stream. So that'll be coming up as a doubles your chance of winning uh, samples and different giveaways. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So um, we appreciate everyone joining us here tonight. We know we kind of cut it off short. We're a little under an hour, but um, we'd rather leave you wanting more than uh, 
um, another one of our epic four hour drunk fests. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. That was a lot of fun, but four hours seemed to just zip by, I remember. But anyways, thank you guys for joining and we will see you if you're Patreons next Wednesday. Thanks guys.